Hey everybody, it's Lynn and Liam. Uh, welcome back to the ins and outs where we each come to this little Zoom to talk about an article that we thought was interesting for the week. Um, I actually really like our articles this week, although I think I like them every week. I don't know about you, Liam. Um, so you're gonna start, is that right? Yes, um, and Full disclosure, last week when we were talking about how we choose our articles, and I was like, you know, I usually have a topic I want to talk about, and I like try to find an article about that topic. This week, I did it your way and just typed sex into my Google search and then went to the news page and picked an article I thought sounded interesting. Yeah, and I don't think you have as much to say, so maybe, maybe your way is better. Yeah, I mean, yeah, so this article I found, I think it's really awesome and interesting, but yeah, I definitely um, was trying to think of stuff to talk about with it, but... I was like, I was just telling you, right? My brain's dead today, so I hope I do it justice because this is a really important article, um, and it's titled Some Pro-Sex Anti-Fascist Artwork for Your Walls. And so uh, it's about this project being done by this group called Utopian something. Towards Utopia, is it? Towards Utopia, yes. And... Um, it's, they are a pro-sex, anti-fascist organization uh, focused on creating this art coalition of um, black trans and sex workers. And so uh, the article starts off talking about how it's been really great, all the uh, you know, activist stuff that's been happening over you know, this kind of some spring summertime with BLM and everything like that, but how it kind of falls slightly short with... Uh, helping trans people and sex workers, especially trans people of color and sex workers of color, uh, because they are an incredibly marginalized population. Um, trans women, for example, of color are the most likely people to be murdered in our country um, and the most likely to not have their murderers ever caught or tried. Um, yeah, the article says, Liam, that the average life expectancy for a black trans person is 35. Yeah, it's crazy. And it's not just like big cities either. Like in Buffalo this year, I'm pretty sure like uh, five or so trans women have been murdered um, and nobody ever really does anything about it. Yeah. Um, and so this group is uh, selling, they're, they're working with artists who are trans and sex workers uh, to create um, like, a fo like photos and stuff like that. And these photos are really, really awesome. They just picked... Uh, protests, uh, trans lives, and like sex worker lives. Uh, and I really like, so I picked this article because these photos I thought were like really, really beautiful. Um, and I love photography art. Um, you and do? All the I do, yeah. Jay likes That's like more I, like, oh. I don't like photography art. No? That's one of my notes, that I'm not really, really a big fan of photography art. Ah, uh, no, uh, Jay doesn't really like photography art either. Um, he prefers his, like, you know, uh, paint art or whatever. Uh, but yeah, no, I love photography art. My sister's also, she, my sister went to school for photography. So we always like got a lot of like photography art. And so I've always just like really enjoyed it. Hmm. Um, wow. All the proceeds but though from this thing are going to, so all the art costs anywhere from $50 to $200. So it's not actually like all that um, unobtainable, right? Like a lot of times I feel like with art sales, people think it's gonna be like crazy expensive, but $50 for a piece of art is, I don't think that unreasonable. Um, and it I goes think it's to, pretty cheap, actually. I feel like sometimes art's really expensive. Yeah, definitely. Like Jay bought a piece, an original piece from like uh, this artist he really loves, and it was like yeah, a few hundred dollars. Yeah. Um, and all those proceeds are going to uh, grassroots organizations that protect uh, pe uh, trans people of color and sex workers. Um, so it's going to Glitz, which is gay and lesbians living in transgender society. Um, for the Grawls, um, which raises money for black trans people, uh, for rent and gender affirming surgery and SWAT Brooklyn, which provides financial assistance to sex work, sex workers in New York city. Um, and one thing that like, so in both of our articles, we talk a lot about sex workers and I cannot decide if the term sex worker is a good term or not. Like, I know it's like what we're supposed to be saying, but I feel really weird saying sex workers all the time. How come? I don't know, I feel like, uh, like it's better than like prostitution, like prostitute or anything like that. 
but I still feel like it's like you know how like we're like when you talk about like trans folk, you're not even supposed to say like a trans woman or a trans man. Like they're just a woman or a man. And so I feel like saying sex work is kind of along the same lines, right? Like I feel like we should just like call it work, but at the same time we can't ignore like all these um you know, oppressions and disenfranchisement that happens to these workers. Interesting. So yeah, you're suggesting maybe it would just like they're just working, like, especially if you're working like in a strip club, right? Like that's just a that's like a legal you can't get arrested for that kind of job. So yeah. yeah, I could see that. It's just just a job. Yeah, and like with um like with other legal professions, right? Like drug dealing and stuff like that. We never call them any like we don't call them like I don't know, drug workers or like illicit illicit substance salesmen. Yeah. Like, yeah, it's an interesting <laughs> euphemism, right? Yeah. And I think it has to do with like uh, A, the fact that like sex is like really stigmatized. And B, the fact that a lot of these people are women, and I think, like, that adds to this whole, like, oppression kind of part of it. Yeah. Um, one thing that I liked about the art, and I'm not somebody who's really interested in art, to be honest, because I just don't understand it, is that there were so many different types. So it's a lot of photography, but there was, like, pencil drawing, there was, like, paint, and it was really all over the place in terms of, like, um, how like whether it was graphic or whether it was like whether you could put it up in your kitchen when your mom's coming over you know like it was suitable for all sorts of houses or all sorts of rooms which I thought was interesting um, also there's all sorts of body types right and there's like different there's diversity in like age and race and it was just like wow this is some of the most inclusive art I have ever seen Definitely, yeah. yeah. And I think that was one of the parts was like they wanted it to be very inclusive. And they like uh, they also depicted like really different themes in a lot of the art, right? So like some of them like focused on like just like li like moments of life, right? Like just hanging out. And then other ones like focused on like exact like, protests and people like at protests and things like that. So yeah, I really liked the diversity of the art. Yeah. Although I don't think been... any art is inappropriate to hang up in your kitchen. Me and Jay have a piece of art that is literally says like one of those like plastic bags that says like, thank you, come again. And it's full of a bag of dicks. Wow. And that's just hanging in our living room. I wouldn't know because you've never invited me over, but. I've never been to your house either. You have invited me. I just never been able to make it. Um, but we can agree that like, it's not like you, I don't know what your parents are like, and my in-laws are really cool, but I'm not sure that like some of my family would understand a bag of dicks in my kitchen. Well, so when I grew up, my mom actually had a uh, photograph of a naked woman um, in our living room. And none of my friends' parents ever said anything about it, but my sister's friend actually was like, is it appropriate to have an image like that in your house? My mom was and like, your mom is like, yeah. Yeah, it is. A, I knew the photographer. I knew the, uh, she knew like the photographer and the model. Like they were friends of hers from back in the 60s. And so she was like, yeah, it's like empowering. It's beautiful. Like, screw you. Wow, your mom sounds cool. Mom is pretty cool. She also took me to my first protest. Wow. I do want a picture. I do want an, um, some art of a naked person in my house. In uh, our bar area, we have uh, a few pictures of like, like 1950s, like women with like kind of like flowy night dresses on and like they're naked. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah. Do you know, my husband teaches Latin and back in the day, so much art was like a little naked. And so I feel like it's one of our common overlapping work interests. Oh yeah, oh, freaking like uh, Roman art was like yeah. nasty as hell, not nasty, was like explicit as hell. Like their baths would have like, instead of like locker numbers where like you left your stuff, they would have like threesomes. And you'd be like, oh, I'm over where the Eiffel Tower is happening. Yeah, and I like that all of it was like, like very body pause. Like a lot of the art is like fleshy women. Mm -hmm. And so I like that um, my body type is more depicted in the classics. <laughs> the classics. I would have been very accepted. I would have been accepted in whatever 1600s. 
You have, you just have like really classical beauty. Thanks, Liam. You're welcome. Um, the other thing I like about this article is it really does make you think like, how can I take something that I'm interested in and use it to like support what I believe in? You mm -hmm. know, like I don't really have any skills that are monetary that can be monetized or you can make money off of. But I, I wish that I did because then I could think of a way to like contribute them to a bigger cause. Yeah, definitely. Like I, I could draw pictures of dicks if I could and I could sell them like, like they're doing. Yeah, I mean, I don't know if like dicks would sell that much, but. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Yeah, it'll be a little more artistic than that. But yeah, I definitely agree. And I like that, um, like it's going towards a cause that people often forget about. And, but the one thing about BLM. And nonprofits, and small and nonprofits, which is also, yeah, yeah. a lot of times, and I know we, we work for Planned Parenthood, a lot of times people will be like, I'm doing this event and I'm donating all my money to like this huge, larger nonprofit and not necessarily are the ones that need it the most. Yeah. Um, so it's like when um, George Floyd was murdered, I like that they had specific Minneapolis nonprofits to donate to because it wasn't just like the larger ACLU of America. It was like, these are the people who are in the community doing the work and not that the ACLU is not worthwhile because it is, but a lot of times we forget about the smaller places. Yeah, definitely. And the sort of uh, the nonprofit that they're asking you to donate to, they are like smaller, but they also are New York City based for the most part. Um, so if you're interested in this kind of thing, um, definitely like buy art, support those causes, but also look for your own nonprofits in your area, right? Like there's plenty of nonprofits in the Buffalo area that support, that are small and support, um, you know, people of color, trans women, uh, MOCA especially is one that jumps to my mind when I think about this. MOCA is like a really awesome nonprofit in Buffalo that supports yeah. uh, all sorts of different people of color. Actually, I just thought of, so during COVID, my friend Jack, he started hosting these trivia nights and he, it was every week. And rather than, um, he did the same thing where he found local nonprofits and he asked people to just like Venmo him money. And he ended up raising like $4,000 for like the African Heritage Food Co-op, um, Black Love Resisting and the rest. So it's like, hey, that's an idea of a skill. Like he wanted to host trivia and he used his skill to like help people. Yeah, that's really awesome. Yeah, it's, the only bad thing is that I was, our team never did very good. <laughs> well, we picked our team all... based on friends, not based on skill. And there are some people who just like crafted their team perfectly. And they were just, they had somebody who could cover every topic. And we were just like, let's hang out and play trivia. And they're like, I need a sports person. I need a pop culture person. It was really annoying. Yeah, there's often like, yeah, I've been on like the trivia at bars when bars were open. And yeah, there were some groups that were like really hardcore. And then there, like, there was my group who was like, Liam, you sometimes know stuff about history. What do you think this answer is? Yeah, that was us. And it became a little defeating after a while. Yeah, definitely. Okay, anything else about your article? Uh, no, I don't think so. We will so have a link to the article, article, though. If you want to buy some of this art, definitely recommend checking it out. And if anything jumps out at you, please, please, please definitely buy something and donate to this group. Yeah, 50 bucks is you People waste $50 on things all the time. Why not use it for something that will last years and is a good cause? Yeah, definitely. Like, you've spent $50 on a mediocre meal before. Oh, my God, like, all the time. Right. So why not? That's how I justify all my expenses. Yeah. I remind myself that I spend money on things that aren't worthwhile all the time. Um, so my article was from Jezebel, and it was about Bella Thorne and how she apologized for destroying basically OnlyFans. And so the backstory is OnlyFans is a website where people can pay to subscribe to people I think it's primarily sex work, although I do know some bit, some people who don't do like sex videos, they just post like nice photos of themselves, so it doesn't have yeah. to be sex work. Um, and like Cardi B has ones, and I don't think she's like giving BJ's on OnlyFans. She, she actually specifically said that her OnlyFans is not, she's not, she said, I'm quoting here, I'm not going to be showing my puss or my ass on my OnlyFans. <laughs> right. And so... It's a comment, it's like the most popular, it must be the most popular subscription yeah. website. 
And we've talked um, about it before. Our first episode, we talked about OnlyFans, right? Right, yeah. Um, and so Bella Thorne, who I had zero idea who she was, no idea. She joined OnlyFans the first day. She made a million dollars. She charged all these people boatloads of cash for like photos. And then because of that, OnlyFans changed their rules, which is like harmed sex workers. That's yeah. the whole summary of the story. Um, so I, you didn't know who, you didn't know who Bella Thorne was. No, and when I, so I heard about this like, I heard like, oh, somebody like made a million dollars on OnlyFans a couple weeks ago. And I automatically thought like, oh, she must be like a porn star just like branching out into her own like OnlyFans and not. Yeah, I thought it was like Mia Khalifa. I was just like, oh, okay, yeah, okay. But that, yeah, she, apparently she was a Disney star, right? She was like the Lizzie McGuire's, is that what you said? Yeah, which one, and the Disney thing adds like a whole nother level to like the unappropriateness of this. Right. And so the article, she basically apologizes, and she says that her goal was to like destigmatize sex work and like mainstream um, OnlyFans or like platforms like OnlyFans. But the article points out like OnlyFans is really mainstream. Oh, yeah. it's in a Beyonce. Beyonce says it, right? Am I think is it Megan Thee Stallion or Beyonce who says it in the song? Uh, I think Beyonce. Says it, but in like that yeah. Magnacilia Savage song. Savage song, yeah. So like, if it's made it on the radio, we don't need some Disney actress being the one. Said by Beyonce, who today is her birthday, by the way. Oh, happy um, birthday, Beyonce. Yeah. I love Virgos, and Beyonce is like the ultimate Virgo to me. Hmm. Like when I think of a Virgo, I think of Beyonce. I know you're really into the Zodiac. Anyway. So because of her, the article, they've now switched to, you have to wait 30 days for your payout from OnlyFans. So if you, Liam, post all these really hot nudes and people are like, I want to buy all these, you then have to wait 30 days to get paid. That's absurd. Yeah, that's a long time. That's more than I pay. I wait for like my paycheck, right? We, yeah. And I think, I <laughs> wish our paychecks were quicker. Like there's a weak lag. Um, and then the max that now people can charge is fifty dollars. For certain things, not for all content. It was like specific content can only be thirty dollars, like fifty dollars. Right. Um, but the I, the message of the article, which I really liked, was like this is not like a game. I know Bella Thorne thinks it's fun, but for many people, especially during COVID, it's like this is how they make their money, right? Like this is their livelihood, and for her to think of it as like this fun thing that she's going to play around with and mess up. It's just like, especially egregious. But I mean, like that's been happening, I feel like so much. Like just the other day, a friend of mine on uh, Facebook was like, hey guys, here's my OnlyFans account. And I was like, you're like, like, not that like, you're not somebody, but like really like, you're not like a sex worker, you're not a porn star. You're just like somebody who thought, let me post pictures and have people pay for them. Now I was like, is this really what OnlyFans is supposed to be about? Well, I don't think they're going to make any money is the problem. Yeah, I don't know. I follow somebody on Instagram who I don't follow. I, I did not follow her for this reason. But since I started following her, she um, joined OnlyFans and she uh, has a um, prosthetic leg. And she always tells people like, you know, you think you're going to get an OnlyFans, but if you don't have some sort of like genre or like, niche or special whatever you're not going to make a lot of money because there's like a ton of oversaturation on only fans so okay. she doesn't have to do a lot of work because there's a fetish around her yep. prosthetic right um but if you're just like a cute girl and you think you're going to post pictures i think the moral of the story from this person is like it's more than that and maybe like if if you're I don't want to like say like if you're on OnlyFans you like have to post nudes and stuff like that. But maybe like if you are on OnlyFans you should stick to like you know sex news things like that. Um, if you want to just post like pretty pictures of yourself, you can just get like a Patreon or something, right? Like so many artists I follow have Patreons. Why? And Patreon doesn't really have rules around like I don't think you can have sex on Patreon, but they don't have like rules on that much. You can have sex on Patreon. Can you really? I follow somebody who she um. She's actually from Rochester, and her name is London Andrews, and she is like a plus size 
model and she also does sex videos and she uses her Patreon and her OnlyFans to fund a farm sanctuary. Huh. Yeah, it's pretty rad. And so she posts like really hot pictures and then pictures of her like helping goats. And it's a really interesting combination of like, here's me like getting bit by bees while like trying to get this goat out of this situation. And then it's like, and here's my ass. Weird. I, I never thought like Patreon, like everybody I found Patreon is like cosplay, like sexy cosplay, right? But not like dicks out or anything like that. Um, or like Amanda Palmer, she has a Patreon where she like gives you a new song every week. Yeah, I am um, do Patreon for, I used to do it for the public, the newspaper. Oh, okay. They had a Patreon. Um, the Minimalists, I don't do it anymore, but they had a Patreon. So yeah, I agree. It's mostly not sex, but it can be sex. Oh, okay, yeah, I just feel like, yeah, if you're not like, I, don't know, I think like fans only should be like porn maybe or, like or, like porn esque things. Well, otherwise you're like, like kind of you otherwise you're kind of like colonizing somebody's space, right? Like yeah. Oh, I'm cute. And I'm gonna take a cute picture. I'm gonna like steal other people's space that they have already established for themselves. Yeah, but I also like I don't want to be like anti. Like I don't want to like anti fans only right like i don't want to be like oh you shouldn't do fans only because like you, like only can. fans what only fans oh yeah only fans <laughs> i just, I I just know. don't I know who's gonna pay no offense your friend is probably cute but who's gonna pay for a kid like that just sounds like instagram to me yeah and like i don't know if they're actually like showing like their penis or anything and like maybe if they are like i bet there are a bunch of like people in Buffalo who know him, who've wanted to, like, fool around with him, who, like, would pay to see his wiener? Every month? I don't know about every month. That's the thing, like, yeah, like, if the first month, like, people are going to pay to see your wiener um, or pay to see, like, what you have. But then it's, like, then, like, the next month, they'll probably fall off. Um, and that's something that happened with um, this woman who posted it. What's her name again? Uh, Bella Thorne. Bella Thorne. She, like said she was gonna post nudes or something and then like never actually posted her nudes and had to like have money that's why they're that's why they changed it to a 30 day like payout period because if you don't supply what you said you're gonna supply it's hard to get your money back things like that this person also bella thorne was also involved with some sort of like soft corn porn film in the past yeah. And they pointed out in this article that they said, they said that Pornhub is, like, decimating the adult film industry. And I had never considered that, but it's probably 100% true. Oh, it is definitely 100% true. And Pornhub in general has been hitting some, like, really negative stuff recently. Um, yeah. Like, A, they're, like, they're messing with the porn industry, uh, which the porn industry has always kind of been, like, not so great to the actual workers, right? Like, it's always gone to, like, so, I don't know a lot of straight porn companies, but, like, gay porn companies, like, Helix Studio is a big one, um, and that, they didn't really support their workers too much, it always just, like, stole the money from the workers and paid them minimal, not, like, minimum wage, but, like, minimal amounts to keep them working. Um, and Pornhub has just exasperated that situation. But on top of that, Pornhub has also been shown to, like, um, work with not working directly with like child um, pornography or child traffickers or sex traffickers in general but there are some lawsuits that are happening about Pornhub like post like allowing videos of like 15 year olds having sex um, and then not like working super hard to get those videos down and things like that so Pornhub really? is definitely yeah it's definitely like not the greatest which sucks because it's a great place to watch porn but at the same time, it's kind of, you know, encouraging child sex trafficking and messing with porn stars and their work. So it sounds like Facebook, how Facebook got so big and then they were not accountable. Yes, definitely. Yeah. But at the same um, time, Pornhub does like encourage safer sex. Uh, right now, their logo actually has like a condom on it to encourage safer sex. So they're both negative and positive. Yeah. But the negative um, is probably always the positive. Yeah, I, I do know that some people are now, so the good thing about that places like OnlyFans, right, is that it puts the money back in like the creator's domain, 
And now there's a bunch of, since it's only fan drama, a lot of people are going to different platforms. I didn't realize that I do follow a lot of sex workers on Instagram. Somebody I went to high school with, she was on OnlyFans, but she left. And now she's on something, I think it's called Frisky. And so now there's like smaller, more independent websites popping up. But the problem is like without the traffic, like do the people drive the traffic or does the traffic drive the people? Like without, she's going to make less money right now. Yeah. You mean, I don't, as I don't, I don't know exactly how OnlyFan works. Um, Cause like everybody I know on OnlyFans, I've seen, I only know they're on there because of Instagram. And they're like, follow my OnlyFans. So I don't know if people like go onto OnlyFans and try to find, like, is it like really like a search thing? Like you would on Facebook or Instagram? Or is it like you get pulled from Facebook or Instagram to the OnlyFans page? Because if it's like this, if it's from Instagram to OnlyFans, then like anybody, like any platform could be fine, right? Because you're just like on Instagram with your fans and then you're telling your fans go to Frisky instead of OnlyFans. Yeah, that's a good question. I also just think it depends on like what kind of porn user you are. Yeah. Like, are you looking for a specific thing? Cause I bet you on like OnlyFans, you can search like amputee if that's what you're interested in and they'll populate it. Yeah. Or, do you, or, or are you like you, you just want to see this one person's dick. So you like click there. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I did like the article suggested that instead of apologizing, she should donate all of the money she made to yeah. nonprofits. Do you think she will? Um, I, I hope so. Yeah, I'm know. not really sure. Yeah, like, I mean, I don't, again, I don't really know this person at all, so I don't know her character or anything like that. Um, but she definitely has, in the article brought this up, she's been using, like, she says, like, I'm trying to, like, destigmatize sex work and stuff like that, but she's been using sex and sex work to like revamp her career after being a Disney star, which happens all the time, right? Britney Spears, Christina Aguilera, Lindsay Lohan, uh, Selena Gomez, the list goes on and on, of these people who like left Disney and had to become like extra- uh, Sexual. Sexual to like break that Disney princess uh, thing. And she's doing a very Miley similar Cyrus. thing. Miley Cyrus. Miley Cyrus, yep. And now she's doing a very similar thing um, but to like a whole new extreme and kind of like uh, was like appropriating sex culture to like make herself more money. And I think that's like incredibly inappropriate. Yeah, I agree. I don't know who this person is, but I've decided off the bat, not a fan. Yes. And one of her like excuses for why she was like doing this was to do research. But her experience on OnlyFans is not the experience of like a regular person, right? Like, any other, like, regular person, they're, like, they have Instagram, Facebook, they're hacking, they're, like, hauling, they are trying hard to do it, and she just comes on and makes a million dollars, and that is not the same experience. If you want to know what it's like, interview sex workers like any other actor does, or, yeah. Well, also, I don't think it seems like ethical research, like, it seems like your research is harming people. Yeah, you're stealing. And that's the opposite them. of what a research is supposed to be. It's supposed to be, like, observing the natural existence yeah it's like uh, a couple weeks ago right i had that article about um the tv show that's going to be about uh, a strip club in the mississippi delta and that person who created that show she went and she hung out and she became friends with these strippers to figure out like, like what is your life like i want to show like a nice rounded view of what your life and what your culture is like and this bella girl didn't do any of that she just like went online to try and like revamp her image and i think that's like really annoying I made a million dollars. I made a million dollars, maybe. But then, like, her money got what taken are the away. Taxes? Yeah, what are the taxes? Yeah, what are the taxes like? I have no idea what taxes are like um, for anything, really. Like, I don't even know what my taxes are like. <laughs> yeah, especially not these days, right? Yeah. Okay. Do you have anything else to add about the article? Let me check. Uh, no, not really. Yeah, I just think it's really interesting to think about things like OnlyFans, especially during COVID, because it's the lives of people who do sex work are so different now. Yeah. And so when somebody like Bella Thorne comes in and like even makes it even more like you're like trying to get 
money on OnlyFans. There's way more people on there now. And now this woman comes and she like steals all the, doesn't steal, but she like takes all your customers. It just, can we just be better people? Yeah, definitely. Like let's not invade other places. Let's not like gentrify all these things. Like things can be like dirty and underground. They don't have to be like blown up and you don't have to like make money off them. Also, if Beyonce did it first, you're not, you're not a mainstream in anything. Is all I'm saying. Definitely. And maybe we should be mad at Beyonce, like not mad, but like maybe we should like, think about like Beyonce and like how she, like, appropriated this to make money, right? Like, I would be curious how many more people who listen to Beyonce know what OnlyFans are because of Beyonce. Yeah, or even like so. I don't want to like get a bunch of people who love Beyonce against me. But I'm in the beehive. Okay. So, have you watched the Disney Plus uh, Black is King Beyonce thing? No. So, I had such a hard time watching it as a white male who really probably does not need to talk about any of this. But she, um, I, I, I felt like she was appropriating African culture to make money for herself in Disney. And I was really conflicted about this because she is like an African American, right? This is like kind of her culture. Um, but at the same time, like it's like she was doing this to for Disney and Disney's a uh, giant multi conglomerate corporation that has like a board full of white people and they're making tons of money off this kind of like cultural appropriation in a way. And I was really like, I couldn't tell if it was okay or not. Hmm. Yeah, I actually don't know anything about it, really. It was good, and it was, like, based off of, like, The Lion King, right? Um, and it had, like, really powerful messages about, like, you know, BLM and Black is Beautiful, and it was a really beautiful thing, but it was very African-centric, and, like, I don't know, it felt, like, really, I couldn't tell if it was, like, okay or not for, her, for this to be happening. Or more for Disney to be doing this. Yeah, for Disney, yeah, that was, like, one of the major things, like, Disney was paying for this to be done, and Beyonce does, like, she, she has been great about, like, uh, encouraging diversity on a group she works with, right, so, like, she's done things where she's gone and been, like, there's not enough diversity in this group, you need to find more diversity or else I'm not working on this project, and that's awesome, um, but at the same time, I don't know if it's okay to, you know, appropriate culture like that, like, even me, like, if I was like a musician or artist, like, should I like use like Irish culture and like these kind of like Irish like stigmas to like to like make my music? Yeah, I don't know if I have a good opinion about this because I literally don't know anything about it. Yeah, but I, mean, I do hate any times um, any time a multi bajillion dollar conglom conglomerate makes boatloads of cash off of other people oppressed communities. Especially when they disrespect their cultures so many other times. Definitely. And like, I don't think that this was disrespecting a culture, but again, it's not my culture. So I'm, you know, I, I can't really say either way about it. It just, as I was watching it, I kept thinking like, is this okay for Disney to have done this? Hmm. Maybe I'll watch it. I'm going to watch Black Panther this weekend. Black Panther's awesome. I've never seen it. I don't really like movies. No? No, but the kids want to watch it, so... I'm gonna watch it. Nice. Saturday at the Connection, guys. Black Panther. Black Panther and Chinese food. And Chinese food. About 2 p.m.? 2 p.m. 2 p.m. Be there, be square. Okay, I'll see you next week, Liam. Yes, definitely. Oh, one last thing. Did you see the thing about, from Canada about uh, using a mask while you're having sex? Yeah, don't make out with your partner and wear a mask when you're having sex. Yeah, I almost like did that today but then i was like i think that's too close to covid so i don't want to talk about it on here but it was hilarious to read about i was just talking to a friend about like they had not had sex in a long time and they were like well now i really can't have sex because of covid because they don't have a live they don't have a partner that lives with them yeah and so we like devised this plan about how like they could coordinate getting tested at the same time and then like quarantine themselves while they wait for the results and then, then like have a sexual meetup and then go like go on with their ways and just like quench their thirst for sex. 
And it is true, like in the time of COVID, if you want to be truly safest from COVID during, and have sex, it's a challenge. Oh, yeah. I'm not sure how many people would go through those lengths. Yeah, I think that's a, that's a lot to do for sex. And we, we, I've discussed before how lazy I am when it comes to anything. <laughs> You're like a panda. Pandas are so lazy when it comes to sex that they actually struggle with uh, population. Yeah, and th but now there is a new panda at the uh, National Zoo. I love the National Zoo. Me too. All right, enough is enough. Okay, uh, bye everybody. We'll smash that next... subscribe button. Yeah, smash that subscribe button, like us, uh, hit the bell for notifications, and we will see you all next week.